there's been a lot of um, tree planting being done in this country, but there's been no tree growing. There's a lot of, 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 of publicity made out of, oh, we're going to plant 100,000 trees or a million trees or 5 million trees. We shouldn't really be thinking about that. We should be thinking about, I'm going to plant 100 hectares and I'm going to make a forest. Come on, puppies, this way, this way. Come puppies, oh yes, look at here. I had a friend who actually introduced us, um, based in Uganda, and he was managing a 5,000 hectare plantation for a, for a German guy. Then he introduced me to Kenya, um, and Kenya was already doing, he had his, uh, an indigenous tree seedling nursery and all his eucalyptus plantation. We came up to Soisambu one weekend and Tom Chumley said, have some land, plant some trees. So that was the sort of genesis of, of, of African forest and us being in this beautiful place today. I'm Helen Thornton Matiso. I'm a director and shareholder, non-executive director and shareholder of African Forest. My name is Kenya Mutiso and I am also a director at African Forest. African Forest is a holistic agroforestry company. We were established in 2006, April. We have a 20-year license to occupy 126 acres on Soisambu Estate, um, where we have an indigenous tree seeding nursery. There's a very good friend of mine. He used to tell me there's loads of money in trees. This is when I was in the property business. And I used to look at him and go, And then one day, just when, when the, the whole buzz came out about these eucalyptus trees from South Africa that grow in five years, I have, had, I have um, access to about six acres of land that I didn't need to buy and purchase. So, so I, I persuaded the owner can I plant some, some of these trees? So I planted them. <laughs> yeah, they grew. When, they, when the trees grew, I could see there's money that can be made here. They'd also, there's, there's just something about watching something you plant grow and become something that's worth something. This is where the plant positive came from. By observing how the trees grew in the beds, the trees that are in the middle grow much faster because they only receive the sunshine when the sunshine is overhead. The trees on the side, they get sunshine in the morning. The trees on this side get sunshine in the evening. So the ones in the middle are the ones that don't get sunshine, so they, they grow much faster. So this, in fact, is what started our idea of plant positive. And then we decided now to mix the different species so you get different trees putting in different nutrients, taking out different nutrients, so you get better growth rates. If you just allow a piece of land to stay, to, to, to be fenced off and, and no livestock going on there, that, that natural regeneration process will happen. But to get to a closed canopy forest, you're talking about 50 years. What we looked at was how do we emulate that and create those same conditions of a biodiverse forest with pioneer species and climax species in it to create two things. Firstly, revenue generation and profit from that land, and secondly, rapid regeneration of indigenous forest. is meant to be X number of trees per hectare at X height, with X canopy cover. There are many different ways people, organizations that 
world world um, agroforestry they have their definition FAO have their own definition Kenya government have their own definition we would define forest as at least 70 percent canopy cover and trees at least three to four meters tall minimum minimum we would like to to help towards a 10 percent forest cover by 2030. There's a lot of tree planting that happens in this country, which is very, very good. The corporate world has been excellent, you know, Safaricom, Kenya, KCB, Equity, Greenbelt Movement, they have planted millions of trees. But how many have been grown in that thing? There's a lot of tree planting that occurs, but there's no, you know, we can't, you can't just go and plant trees and leave them. Just like when you plant your cabbages and your weed it and you know, give it, give nurture it for some time to grow it to a certain stage where it can fend for itself. Yeah. So um, yes, I think we should start growing trees. We should grow trees, not plant them for, for starts. In a lot of um, tree planting, the survival rate is less than five to 10%. So if someone plants a million trees, you've only got 50 to 100,000 left um, after even as little as a year. We shouldn't really be thinking about that. We should be thinking about, I'm going to plant 100 hectares and I'm going to make a forest. Instead of, instead of all this sort of publicity on we're planting a million trees or two million trees, which is just not productive. It's actually better to plant 100,000 trees and see them all survive and get a forest than to plant a million trees. Our former minister, late minister of environment, the Honorable Mishuki, 2011 or 12, okay? At that point, he said, we need seven billion trees to be planted and grown. The total eco challenge, every year for the last 15 years or something, them and their partners have been planting up to 100 million trees a year. But these 100 million trees are trees that are planted for, they're, they're, not, they're, they're not defining um, it's exotics and so you're talking about the, the, they're in partnership with the big tea factories that are planting huge acreage of land for, for their boilers, okay? So if you were, those guys are doing 100 million. I think the government is doing another, maybe 100 million, maybe 150, I'm not sure. Back in 2012, that would have to have been doing 500 million. So even up, up to now, we're still doing half. But we don't even have capacity to produce the balance. There's, no, there's not enough seed. The government currently produces around five to, five to 10 tons of seed a year. Um, our seed centre should be producing five to seven tonnes within five years. Um, that's giving you maybe a maximum of 15 tonnes. In order to plant half a billion trees a year, or 500 million, you need about 50 tonnes of seed. Um, that's the first starting point. Then you need the tree nurseries. To, to plant that number of trees, you need to plant about 11 million seedlings per county per year, which is going to take anywhere from two to three thousand hectares of land per county per year. You need to have people trained to maintain, um, to plant and maintain those trees. All they require is constant care. So like until they establish themselves, you want to make sure you give them water at least once every two days. Here in Kenya, the only land, land left to plant for, forestry, high, um, high potential land, is, it's occupied by people. Okay, so the, to achieve our 10% forest cover that the government wants, we need to actually plant a lot of this forest on private owned land and in small pa parcels. But on everybody's 50 by 80, they've got 10% of it as trees. I'm sure it'll look pretty, it'll look, it'll, it'll, look, it'll be nice. I think that, that would be a good achievement. 
So before you start planting anything, you actually got to do, go and do some sort surveys and make a, make a plan with the community. You know, a lot of, a lot of um, things in this, in this whole, it's some guy sitting in some office in Europe, or even here in Nairobi, says, this is what we think these people need. And they go and they try to implement, and I don't think it works. was uh, an area of uh, 8,715.3 hectares. The community here and the population is quite high. And uh, it is exerting a lot of pressure inside this forest. Because uh, we have a lot of exploitation, people uh, extracting bamboo for building, for fencing the, their farms. And uh, most recently, an influx of uh, livestock. The animals came to graze because of the grass. Because of the grass. So, but you still allow the cattle to come in here to graze, especially in this time in of the drought. circumstances. But in normal circumstances, we don't we don't allow. All the communities surrounding this area are relying on this forest for water, for livestock, and uh, other upkeep, eh? firewood, and all that. Almost five years. The owner and the panda do test a coin, economic side is a wingy, Kujenga, the Sausa, and the Sumesha Kijana. Okay. Come out to the panda meet Kawingi, Mim Nayula Mungine, Iki and Gasmeo, Wakatu, Kenya, Atunga Kuanai. Financially, you can gain from tree planting in a number of ways. Production in Kenya at the moment is just of direct harvesting. If you actually now start processing them, you can increase your profit margins quite dramatically. Umuhimu wa miti huwa inatusaidia kwa mvua, environment, na environment inakuwa safi, kwa sababu ikuwa na miti wakati upepo imekuja, Hua inakinga, haiwezi kuwa na uharibifu, na hua inafruta mvua, na tena, kama hivyo ninafaidikia kwa gam, kwa sababu ikituwa hiyo gam inasaidia. Financially, you can gain from tree planting in a number of ways. You can, um, if, if you're planting in our planet positive model, um, you're harvesting um, 1,600 trees a hectare in year four, five, and 1,600 in year 10 to 12. You're then, you've then got the stumps to dig up to make charcoal. Mm -hmm. This is our charcoal kiln. It's called, um, as you can see from the, the shape, it's called a beehive kiln. So basically what happens, you see there's an open door here and an open door on the other side. So the, the, the entire kiln is filled with wood, packed as close together as possible, so to reduce the amount of air and therefore oxygen. You, you're not getting oxygen getting in. As soon as oxygen's getting into something burning, it will eventually burn to ash. Um, but with this, you actually, because you're stopping the air from getting in at a certain, at a certain critical period, you actually get full charcoalization occurring on the kiln. You've got all the non-timber forest products from the trees. Anything that come from the forest that are not timber. So they're not timber, they're not charcoal, they're not um, firewood. It can involve anything from the fruit, the leaves, um, the bark or the, the, the inner bark, gums, tannins, dyes, um, soaps. Um, so all of these things can be made into products. So some finished products, we've got 
wild apricot forest jam that comes from the Dovialis abyssinica. Then we have forest chutney. Then you have medicine. So this, for example, is Prunus africana. Um, this comes from the leaf of the Prunus tree. Um, it's a vascular dilator, so it dilates the blood vessels, allowing the blood to carry more oxygen to all the cells, um, keeping the cells healthy. Um, and in dilating the blood vessels, it also lowers high blood pressure. The profit margins on non-timber forest products really dip. A lot of the, the production in Kenya at the moment is just of direct harvesting and selling. So for example, a lot of the, the gum arabic, um, frankincense, things like that, are sold, they're sold raw onto China or to, to Korea or other places. Now, if you actually now start processing them, you can increase your profit margins quite dramatically. Passion yangu ya miti ni mabu wabao nilianza zamani sana. Nimeenda kazi nyingi. Lakini ninapo eda, ninaona, ninarudi kwa miti. Manake hii ni passion. Vijana wegi wa igizwe katika hii kazi. Manake hii kazi ni ya vijana. Kama ni vijana wagepewa hiyo kazi ya kupada hiyo miti. Na wao pia wae na ujuzi pia wakupada hata muti kutoka kwa nazare, mpaka kweda kwa shamba. Hiyo kazi igekua inafanyika vizuri sana. Vijana Miti Initiative is an initiative that was, um, it came to us through some Vijana. We have an intern, his name is Simon. And he, he was like, how come we help the, the young generation in this country to appreciate trees and also to, there's a lot of job creation that can be done out of this tree business. So how can we work with the, the Vijana? To lead Kenya's Vision 2030, we need to plant like 200 million trees each year, each year, each year, each year. We approached African Forest with the idea that during this campaign and electioneering period, we need to plant trees, at least each voter to plant one tree. Shambaya Om Sai to Kibonga, the real thing. Miti Akuna, also Mekata Chini, Giannini Sosov, on a Tafta Pesa. I believe there is no time wasted in planting a tree. I'd encourage people to plant trees. For me, this initiative is very important because um, it lasts till the next generation. Like somebody said, we learn the earth from our children. They are the owners, so we need to take care of the earth because they are the ones who will come next time and take over. We came to understand African forest as a model where they encourage planting both indigenous and exotic trees. So I believe they have a big role to play. In the effort of planting trees, you know, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. Dig a hole and plant a tree. All of us have some land somewhere. No, you don't plant, you don't need to plant money. You can plant 10 a year, you know, so at least somebody can look after them for you. If you, if you work in the city and you have a piece of land there at your shoshos or your grandpa's place, all if Kenyans you... have ancestral land. <laughs> if, if, if it's a case where you don't have land, then you can get involved with local schools, you can get involved with local community groups. To, uh, there's, there's a lot of tree planting initiatives, there's a lot of tree planting that needs to be done in, in forests. If you're a Kenyan without your own land, then I would certainly encourage you to, to, to get involved with, with other organisations which do have land and, and assist them. If each Kenyan just plants one tree, one tree each year, we would be planting about 40 million trees each year, each year, each year. Napenda miti, kwa mwana napata dawa kutoka kwa miti. Napenda miti juu, natutetea mvua. Napenda miti, kwa sababu minatupa mazingina mazuri. <laughs>